What are some oddly specific signs that someone's a good person? They wait for you when you bend down to tie your shoes. Is this not the standard? I think the standard is to roundhouse kick people in the teeth if they bend down to tie their shoes. So that's why everyone made sure to have their shoes tied before talking to Deanaries. They didn't want their teeth bashed in over a misunderstanding. Now it makes sense. John must have just had a loose shoelace and decided not to risk it. They keep the trash with them until they find a dustbin. That's just common decency. Like common sense. Common decency isn't so common after all. Common sense is like deodorant. PPL that need it don't use it. They are not jealous when you succeed, and they don't treat you as a second class citizen when you fail. If they see someone looking confused in a public space, asking if they need directions. I grew up in the Midwest and eventually moved to a bigger coastal city. I never really noticed how much friendlier people were in the Midwest until I visited after a couple years of being away. I was walking around downtown trying to find a certain address when a random person walked up to me and asked if I needed help. That's when it really struck me how different the culture was where I grew up compared to where I moved. Those types of people are the best. Funny enough I found that my expectations for behavior like that were a little different than reality. I grew up in the south and lived in Chicago for a while. And people were nice enough in those places. But now I'm in the New York City area and, at least before COVID, all I had to do was look vaguely confused for a moment before someone offered to help. Of course the volume of people is higher. So maybe the chances of a very kind person seeing you is statistically higher. The difference seems to be the attitude. When New Yorkers help you, they are matter of fact about it. I saw a lady fall on a crowded subway and the people around her picked her up, vacated a seat, and sat her in it. All without saying a word. A new neighbor automatically and quietly helped me when I was struggling with my trash bins. In the south or the midwest. They might have done the same. But they would have been more likely to strike up a conversation while doing it. And in the south it sometimes depends on what you look like. Close bracket. I've actually heard that about New Yorkers. That they are nice and helpful, but very short and abrupt. I think you're right about the treatment you get in the south depending on what you look like. The city I moved to is in the south. And I have always been treated very well as a white woman. My boyfriend, however, who is not white, hasn't had always had the same luxury. From New York City, but raised in the suburbs until the teen years. My take is that New York City is so crowded, demanding, and fast paced that nurses pretend there is a personal bubble around each other to be polite and respectful of each other's precious quiet time and limited privacy. Like, you might be standing on my toe and breathing down the neck of my coat while we are packed like sardines on the subway, but if we each pretend the other isn't there, no one feels awkward or claustrophobic, or like the situation demands some of their finite energy supply to manage. I've had more than one talk with other nurses about the stigma of breaking the code. Mostly in the context of wanting to help someone out but not knowing if we were misreading signals from someone who actually wanted to be left in peace. I always got and gave enthusiastic help when I needed it though. No. I'm not asking you for money, lady. I've been riding the subway since I was born. Just figured you need help. My internal dialogue when someone is clearly lost, but too proud slash scared to accept my help. When someone noticed you were going to talk in a group, but get cut off then later they say you were about to say something. Right? This was one of the ways I knew my boyfriend liked me. Before we were together lol we had a group of chatty people. But he would ask. Wait. What were you about to say? Like even when it obviously wasn't important. I was new to their group. They all knew each other for a long time and often talked over me. But he always made room for me. My husband does something similar. He's a life of the party type. And I'm pretty shy. Often I'll quietly make a joke. That only the people next to me hear. And he'll repeat it to the whole group. And give me credit. My parents have a similar dynamic. My mom was a CPA. Very driven and smart. She retired as a CFO of a small mental hospital, but she's super shy and would rather read a book than go to a party. My dad was a lifelong salesman. He knows how to work a crowd and makes new friends easily, and you likely wouldn't notice. But mom is way funnier. Usually it's incredibly subtle. 
when they drop you off and then wait until they see you go inside safely. Or text slash call you to ask if you got home safely. I know my boss is a good person because he's never said anything mean about a rude client or competitive business. It's always. Those guys do awesome work. That guy is just the best man. I like dudes like that. I like to know how those PPL maintain their mental health though. I like to know how those PPL maintain their mental health though for me it's Superman. Superman may be fictional, but for some reason he's just so inspirational and I want to be like him, so I just try to be nice to everyone, even if they don't deserve it. It's hard though lol, because by default, if someone is rude I suddenly feel anger that Superman's true power restrained. If someone is mean to me, I try to tell myself that they probably needed a winter day and it's got nothing to do with me. It doesn't always work, but it helps haha. <laughs> that is actually pretty on point. I'll start telling that to myself from now on. Thank you. Whoa I'm glad I could pass on something useful. Best wishes. When something terrible has happened to you, but that person still sticks to you and encourages you. Yes. I remember my ex-girlfriend who cheated on me, but stuck by my side throughout the whole crushing depression that entailed. I'm not sure she's such a good person if she cheated on you. But whatever floats your boat egg. I naturally want to lean to the same conclusion. But maybe we underestimate the severity of the depression in this circumstance. Just playing devil's advocate. They can admit when they are wrong about something without getting angry or defensive. Someone can admit they were wrong to them, and they won't abuse that opportunity to push the point. A lot of the things mentioned in this thread really are just common decency, which is almost sad, in a way. Just like common sense it's not actually all that common. They read through these comments looking for ways to improve themselves. They found me. They pick up nails. Screws or sharp objects they come across from the parking lot or road, so people don't get flat tires. AWW my dad does this. We must have the same dad. You guys have a dad. Are ya winning? Son, I haven't won anything since 2004. When a person can set a positive environment. Unnecessary anecdote. Once my friends and I were playing a drinking game. Kings, where you had to make up rules that are normally supposed to make people a little uncomfy. That night, my sweet friend set a rule that you have to give a compliment before each turn. 20 people ended up crying, supporting each other, and reminding everyone of their worth. That's a good person. And that goes down as my favorite college memory. Damn. That's a beautiful story, if I ever heard one. Hopefully some lifelong friendships were forged that day. They say good things about people behind their backs. I would never say this to her face. But she's a wonderful person and a gifted artist. Why wouldn't you say that to her face? R slash unexpect edifice. When in a group of people walking, they make sure nobody gets left behind by spacing themselves between the leaders and the stragglers and keeping an eye on both. I took a caving class in college and part of the class was a required overnight trip. We didn't camp in the cave. But we did some caving the night we arrived, and then spent a good 8 hours caving the next day. It was essentially a semi-rigorous hike, but the only light was from our headlamps, and we had a few tight spots to crawl through. One of my classmates was a bigger guy who didn't have the most graceful people skills. He'd talk a lot. Mostly sarcastic comments he intended as jokes. So a lot of our classmates didn't like him too much. Well. We got to a section of our caving trip, where we were walking through sand and we'd go around a lot of corners. Luckily, there was no way to get lost. But this particular classmate was slowing way down. Literally no one in our class waited for him. Not even the instructor. I didn't think this was safe, because he was having so much trouble just keeping his feet under him. I tried to stay equally distant from the main group and my classmate. But we fell so far behind that I couldn't see the lights from their headlamps anymore. It got to a point where I would stop and listen. Just to make sure I was still in shouting distance in case something happened. I was slightly panicked. Just because my imagination was running away with me. But I certainly wasn't impressed by any of our other classmates after that. Sorry for the long reply. Wasn't expecting it to be so wordy. As someone who has led caving activities. I'm appalled at that instructor. 
Even if it means slowing down, you always keep everyone in sight. Or at least so everyone can touch the person in front and behind. If it's a twisty passage, as well as regular head counts, I'm glad you got out of it okay. For real. Caving even in simple cave systems is no joke. Me, can't find my way out of Minecraft cave. If I didn't mark my path correctly, I wonder if the new caves will solve this issue. Caves right now are just winding tunnels, but with the new update caves will be gigantic. Sticking around and showing up when your friend is in a bad way, even if they have been in a bad way from a long time. You don't have to cook them food every night, but check in so they know you care about them. After experiencing a tragedy, I realized how fair with the majority of the people I had in my life were. It doesn't make me angry so much as sad and disillusioned. I have someone like this, and I'm grateful. Social anxiety can cause me to be very self-absorbed and reclusive. But this person knows this, and just keeps in touch and up to date anyways. The effort to communicate is almost entirely on their end. For sure, it's Herculean. Really, it sounds so small. But having someone call every now and then to genuinely catch up without the interaction feeling like a mandated checkup is a relief. This person isn't calling out of duty, guilt, or whatever. They are calling because they are driving home from work and have a funny, trivial story about something that happened to them that day. They just thought you'd want to hear it and maybe share a laugh. Especially nowadays. It can be really difficult for people with social anxiety or any other issues. So hopefully when you said majority that means you have someone like this in your life. If you do, try to keep up the effort of managing your side of that relationship. That's what I'm working on. Someone who remembers a tiny detail about your life or something you like and brings it up in convo much later on. 